Hello, my name is Chad Hart. I'm an extension economist with Iowa State University. And I'd like to provide you a brief update today as we got the numbers late last week from USDA looking at how our crops are developing and how we're going to hopefully be using them over the next 18 months here in mid-July. Now, with the July estimates, this is usually the first time we do see USDA possibly make some adjustments to the supply side of the market as we're looking forward to the 2024 crops. However, in this case, they didn't make those adjustments this time, but there was still a lot of action to talk about when we're looking at the official numbers from USDA. And as we look at the US corn crop, what USDA found was that yes, we're looking at the potential of a bigger corn crop than we first anticipated, but at the same time too, they did find more demand for that crop as well. So we think about the WASDE report that was released here in mid-July, what they ended up finding was this, is that when we look at the 2023 column there, so the crop that we harvested last fall, we found that we're using that up a bit quicker than they had originally thought. They ended up adding 75 million bushels to feed and residual demand and another 75 million bushels to export demand. So that helped raise that total use line and lower those ending stock levels that had been projected a little north of 2 billion bushels down to 1.877 billion bushels. So that helped ease some of the pressure as we look at the 2024 crop here. And they were able to maintain their season average price at $4.65 a bushel. Now, looking at the 2024 crop, they had to massage in the acreage numbers from the June report there, so 91.5 million acres. As I mentioned earlier, they did not adjust yield yet here, so they, they kept it at 181 bushels per acre. And so that leads to a 15.1 billion bushel corn crop. So we have plenty of supplies to work with. As we look down in the gray box in demand for 2024, though, what they found was they were able to, again, raise feed demand again by another 75 million bushels there as well for 2024. And they added another 25 million bushels to export. So adding on about 100 million more bushels to that total use line there, raising it up to a record 14.905 billion bushels. So we are seeing a very strong demand market, but the challenge here is, is that while demand or that usage is at record levels, production is still above that. And that's what's adding to our ending stocks here. And we still are looking at the potential for ending stocks when we get to not August of 2024, but August of 2025, that we could have over 2 billion bushels in stocks at the end of that year. And that has put downward pressure as we're looking at that season average price for 2024. They lowered that by 10 cents to $4.30 a bushel. Now, when we're looking at the soybean market, they made some you know, minor adjustments here, but they are you know, relatively small and they weren't adjustments that helped the market move in a positive direction. When it came to the changes for 2023, the only thing they changed was the import number. They moved that down 5 million bushels, so from 25 to 20 million bushels imported. So that shrank supplies a little bit. They made no changes to the demand side of the market for 2023. So ending stocks went down just a little. But given where prices have fallen over the past couple of of months, they ended up lowering that season average price by five cents. It's now twelve dollars and fifty cents a bushel. Looking at twenty twenty four, they again made the acreage adjustment from the June acreage report. Ended up lowering that number by four hundred thousand acres. That ended up taking roughly fifteen million bushels out of the production side there. So we're still looking at a very large crop of four point four three five billion bushels. They made no, again, no adjustments to demand for 2024 either. And so we're looking at ending stocks as we look out towards August of 2025, being north of 400 million bushels, a place that we haven't seen in several years. And so that is also putting downward pressure on prices. USDA lowered their season price estimate for 2024 by 10 cents. It's now down to $11 and 10 cents. So the reports, I'm going to argue, were neutral to bearish for soybeans. 
a little more bullish for corn adding to that demand structure. But given the possibility of very large surprise from 2024, the market has still been working its way downward. Because as we look at the growing crop that's out there right now, we are seeing that the, those good to excellent ratings are maintaining here at around 68% when we look at the nationwide U.S. corn crop. Now, the Iowa corn crop got, got downgraded a little bit as we're still dealing with the flooding and we've had some hailstorms move through, but the national crop is still holding at an above average rating, which usually in the long run means above trend line yields. And that's happening for both corn and soybeans as we look here. And again, with Iowa trending back down towards the average line for at least what's happening within state. So there is a little difference between what we're seeing here in Iowa and what we're seeing nationwide. And the nationwide perspective is that we've still got a lot of potential production that could be coming in this fall. Now, one of the things we'll be looking at as we approach though the fall is looking for those export sales. And like I say, on the corn side, that's where we did see some positive momentum this month. Soybean side, it hasn't really been moving. This is looking at export sales over the course of this marketing year thus far. And you can see that we're not only down below average, but we're down compared to the last couple of years in terms of those sales. And, you know, it looks like USDA's estimate for at least the 2023 crop sales is going to hang in there at about 1.7 billion bushels on the soybean side. So we're not seeing a lot of additional growth for old crop or for new crop. In fact, as we look at new crop advanced sales, those are running below last year as well. And this is an area where we will need to see some pickup because USDA is projecting that 2024 soybean exports will increase going north of 1.8 billion bushels. So up about 125 million from what we've been able to export so far this year. Now, when we look at corn, we have seen more of a rebound over the course of the past year. As we look at 2023 sales, they are running a little bit ahead of, of average here and well above what we had last year, but not quite at the record pace that we saw from 2021. But as we look at those export sales, again, we're struggling right now. We haven't seen a lot of international demand kick in yet, but these next couple of months will be critical for that because as we approach harvest, that's when we tend to see our export pace pick up. Now, when we look at the feed side of the equation, again, USDA showed us more bullish numbers for corn. These were sort of neutral for soybeans. What we do see is meat production holding pretty steady for 2025. They did end up increasing the beef and pork production as we look out there, and that helped drive a little more corn usage in the feed and residual category. That is a positive as we're looking forward there. And it's this type of usage momentum that both the corn and soybean crops are looking to build as we go into harvest. But as we look at where we sit today, and this is as of the close of day on Monday on July 15th, we did see the markets for both corn and soybeans take a step back because of those really good crop conditions numbers and the concerns about those very large crops, if you will, overwhelming demand as we look forward over the next 12 to 18 months. Current futures, as we look towards December of 2024, are floating in that $4 range right now. In fact, when you look at the futures market take off an average basis, it would point to a season average price of 405 right now for the 2024 crop. So you can see that that's running about a quarter below what USDA is currently estimating. So the markets have become more bearish um, than the USDA projections, which is a flip from where we were at just a couple of months ago, where the markets were offering more of a price premium uh, to corn growers as we look out there. Now, looking deeper into 2025, you can see that that season average price estimate for next year's crop is holding up there around that 440 range. We are seeing the market sort of show belief that yeah demand will continue to grow for corn and that we could see stronger prices as we look deeper into 2025 and 2026. Now flipping the soybeans though it is much more let's call it of a, of a flat line as we look out there towards pricing. We do see 
let's call it in the short term here, nearby soybean futures are in a relatively good spot, but we see a definite drop off as we approach harvest this year. As we look at November soybean futures, they're down around $10.40. That's down over a dollar compared to where they were just at over a month ago. You can see a little bit of a carry building in for the 2024 crops, but not much getting us back up to the 1080 range. And when I take off that average basis and look at the 2024 season average price estimate, the markets are pricing in around the 1010 range where USDA's estimate is 1110. So you can see again, the markets are much more bearish than what USDA is when we look at the outlook for this year's crop. Now, looking at the 2025, here's a case where corn, we were seeing some buildup. We're seeing a little bit of buildup in soybeans, but not as much as in corn, where that season average price is now estimated at $10.34 as we look out there. So, as you know, in the grand scheme of things, I'll, I'll sort of frame it this way. What we've had is that we've had prices generally trending downward over the past year to 18 months. When you think about where we were at about a month ago, I could argue we were seeing prices around break even, around our production costs. And that's that big black line at $4.60 for corn and eleven twenty five dollars for soybeans. Since then, the markets have really concentrated on the really good crops, especially as we look towards the eastern corn belt, and just the size of the crops that we have. We had, you know, 91 and a half million acres as the estimated plantings for corn, 86.1 million acres for soybeans. And you combine that with those good crop conditions. And so there is this idea that, you know, we're looking at very large crops coming in this fall. And while demand is really good, it's not quite good enough to handle those large crops. And that's what continues to put downward pressure on prices. Now, as we move forward, one of the things I'll be watching is to see, do those crop ratings continue to stay up there? Do we see some of these extreme weather events start to erode that down? You know, as we look at the full effects of the flooding that happened in Northwest Iowa, of the hail events and the extreme weather that we're seeing move through the countryside here in mid to late July. Will that start to take a bite out of that production? And if it does, that should stem the downward movement on prices and maybe start to work those prices back up. And in fact, you know, if you look at USDA's price estimates, I would say that's what USDA is sort of expecting as we look out there, that we could see this rebalancing, if you will, to help pull prices back up a little bit, but probably not quite back to where we were a month ago. Well, with that, we'll stop the presentation here. I want to thank you for your time and patience as you look at these videos. Again, my name is Chad Hart. I'm an extension economist with Iowa State University. And I want to thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.